Okay, is Reverend Connolly here? You can do the invocation now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. me up, but we're grateful to God uh, for this celebration and everyone who is here uh, as we are given cancer the boot. Uh, we give honor to God for uh, all that 
uh, many of you have endured and uh, just celebrate this moment. Thank you, Mother Brown, for inviting me to be here. The word of God uh, from Psalm 103, which I think is um, just a wonderful reminder and celebration uh, for all of us at this time. Uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Now, who forgives all of your iniquities? Here it is. Who heals all of your disease? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagle? And oh my God, we, we give honor to God for restoring our youth, for healing our bodies, and for giving us good things. Let's pray. God and Father, we, we thank you. All praise belongs to you. Uh, no one gets the glory uh, but you. We thank you that uh, David has so eloquently stated for us that we don't need to add anything to it, God. You, uh, we, we should bless you for everything that you've done. You are the creator. Uh, God, you, you're the creator who thinks so much of us, who wants to satisfy us with good. And we can see just from this gathering, all those who uh, have been uh, recipients of your goodness. God, you have healed us uh, from all of our diseases. God, you have uh, cleansed us of all of our iniquity through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're able to celebrate what you are doing. God, I pray that you would be glorified in our midst on this morning. God, I pray that we never forget to give you all the praise for all that you have done and all that you will do. Bless our time on this morning. We love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Damon Conley. We really appreciate your support today. Giving praises to God and thanking our sponsors. Some have been with us for over a decade. Gen Genentech, Gilead, Amgen, Janssen, Bristol Myers Squibb, Takeda Oncology, Merck, Let's give our virtual applaud for those making this event possible. After 23 years, 50 Hoops is transitioning, almost has already transitioned our national events to our 50 Hoops legends. These legends all have answered the call to produce events based upon 50 Hoops template from dinner lectures to community advocacy site training for doctors and clinical researchers. Today, we recognize and salute these legends. 50 Hoops has been transitioning our national outreach to these outstanding individuals and organizations from 50 Hoops network of coordinators to 50 Hoops legends. And today, our board members take the banner. Each is a legend in their own right. Each legend can stand alone in conducting powerful and effective virtual and live workshops that replicate 50 Hoops events. It is our pleasure to bring you yet another premiere today, a, you, a new and unique legends workshop. In fact, as of October, our legends have completed 11 of 15 workshops and legends graduations. Each legend continues to present highly unique workshops and individual to the legend presenting it. Yet each legend has synchronized with 50 Hoops, their style that has become popular. Today, we're celebrating our graduates, Mother Danita Brown and Dr. Jason Porter. Before we begin, I want to say that legend Danita Brown found that during an operation, her 84-year-old mother had cancer that had spread through her body, so they stopped. Yesterday, one hour before the workshop, legend Dr. Thomas Britt, best friend, a true brother from another mother, and a friend of ours, Dr. Terry Mason, was rushed to the hospital. Danita and Tom, these are true legends to the cause of relentlessly educating African-American communities about cancer and COVID. Both yesterday and today, our legends have insisted on continuing their workshops so they would not disappoint their speakers nor their audiences. 
Mother Danita Brown, Dr. Thomas Britt, these are true October legends in the face of what must be one of the hardest trials of their lives, they think of others. Our October legends, please let's give a virtual applaud. Now, let me say a little bit about Mother Danita Brown. We started working with South Haven and Memphis in 2015 with legend Rodney Franklin. He helped us to coordinate our first fabulous 50 to sexy at 60 luncheon lecture. We came back in 2016 with legends Sandra Hamilton and met Danita. After that, we've conducted 50 Hoops games, cancer breakfasts, African Americans in clinical trials. There's a new cancer in town for two years and moved to virtual in 2020 where Danita and Brown Missionary Baptist Church has continued to support community education and outreach both locally and nationally. Danita is an outstanding woman. She's appeared on the cover and in articles of over half dozen or more local, state, and nationally read magazines. She rides motorcycles. She rides horses. She can drive anything with wheels. She's kind. She's funny. She's loving and has been designated Mother Danita Brown by her church, a great honor in any church. Danita is a friend a little sister, a daughter, all wrapped up in one. Why? Because everyone wants to be her friend. Most people who meet her are so entranced that they want her as a little or big sister, which is why, by the way, she's mentored dozens of young women in her lifetime. And as for a daughter, she is our daughter from another mother and we love them both. Whenever I've talked with Danita, she's helping somebody, driving a church member to the doctor, taking food to the shut-in, gathering clothes for the needy, heading to a cancer session, letting a breast cancer survivor know how powerful she is. I tell her constantly, she's always earning her wings in heaven. Slow down and let some of us catch up. In short, Danita is dedicated a Christian servant 24-7, 365 days a year. Those who know her are always telling her to get some rest. If there's a need by a church member or anyone she knows, you can count on my baby Danita to have your back and protect you from whatever needs protecting. She's a leader who knows how to lead and to follow. She's humble and loyal, but most of all, Danita makes you strive to be the friend to her that she is to you. Danita Brown, a true legend. Danita, God is in this plan. Dr. Jason Porter. Dr. Porter is one of the most outstanding doctors 50 Hoops has had the pleasure to work with. He's known in his hometown and widely for his sincerity, compassion, and giving the extra step for his going the extra step for his patients. When we met Dr. Porter in 2018, he was a speaker at Brown Missionary Baptist Church for 50 Hoops. There's a new cancer initiative in town, the National Tool for Multiple Myeloma. He's practical, actually funny description of how multiple myeloma develops in our bodies was spellbounding and erupted with applause. For the first time, I think everyone present with cartoon and culturally relevant pictures in their minds understood multiple myeloma cancer and how it affects us as black folks. We invited Dr. Porter to join us in New Orleans, our newest city on the tour. Having an opportunity to spend personal time with Dr. Porter was truly a treasure. His casualness and ease of communication was more like talking with your cousin or uncle than talking with a medical doctor with specialties in both hematology and oncology, not to mention dozens of other degrees and honors. He's a Christian who tries to live as a healer of body and spirit. 
he lives his life and his practice for others and everything he does revolves around helping someone within our within or without of his medical practice. 50 Hoops is proud to have Dr. Jason Porter, a member of, of our board of directors and national medical advisor, who is always there for 50 Hoops with support and ideas. Dr. Jason Porter is a giver, the true essence of love thy neighbor. Dr. Jason Porter, a true legend. God is in this plan. And now because of you, Mother Danita Brown, Jason, Dr. Jason Porter, because of you, 50 Hoops is celebrating 23 years as a unique African-American nonprofit patient and medical education company that has moved to unprecedented level of achievement. To have among us someone like you with an unmatched commitment and dedication to African-American patients and communities within your power to change and influence. You both are a true legend. And now as founders of 50 Hoops, we officially ask you to turn your tassel from right to left, signifying first your right to be a national legend, both in your community and nationally, and to the left to represent a new chapter of your continued commitment to service to your church, your community, and from henceforth, African-American community throughout the nation. And today, for utilizing 50 Hoops replications in your outreach annually, legends, please turn your tassel. Let the commencement event begin. Dr. Porter, please introduce legend Mother Danita. Wow. What a blessing and an honor to be a part of this. And um, before I introduce Mother Brown, I just want to thank you and um, both Pat and Ed for inviting me into 50 Hoops family and for giving me a chance to reach out to the community here. And not only here, but uh, so far, you know, other places in the country. And then we even did virtual meetings where, I mean, it's just been amazing and I, I'm so grateful. Um, but what I can say and what I will say about Mother Danita Brown, the first thing that I wanna say is that for everybody on, Mother Danita Brown is a teacher and has retired from formally teaching, but you can never stop teaching if you're a teacher. And I recognize and acknowledge teachers a long time ago in my life because you can't be a doctor without a teacher. You can't be an attorney, an accountant. You can't even, you can't do anything without teachers. And my respect for teachers is endless. And I actually had the pleasure of of taking care of one of my, my first grade teacher as a physician. And that was mind blowing because I got to tell her thank you because without her and her influence lasted through the rest of my education and even now. And Mother Brown, I can't imagine that there are not some students that remember sitting in your classroom, learning from you and experiencing life through your eyes and learning how to live life you have taught and just listening to Pat talk about you taught me a lot. And, and now I'm encouraged and even more inspired by you, a teacher um, having received a degree from Lemoyne Owen College undergrad, oh, okay. and then going on to get that master's degree in education from Christian Brothers University, my alma mater, and teaching all the way. Now um, working with the Brown Baptist Church and the cancer survivors ministry, the cancer support ministry. You don't even know it, but some of my family members are cancer survivors right there at Brown Baptist Church. Wow. Some of my cousins, and they are blessed by your influence and they're blessed by what you do. So even though we don't get to talk regularly, you are still influencing my family and my life on a very regular basis. And I, most of you know Mother Brown, so I'm not really introducing her. But I'm saying that as a teacher 
and an influencer in our community and in your church that's reaching out to not only us here in Memphis and South Haven, but all over the country. And I dare not even say it, but all over the world, you are influencing and you are a legend. And I'm just so excited. And there are no words that I can say. I can't wait to get to know more about you and to, to engage with you more because I think that you still have a lot to teach us. And so I'm grateful to be able to introduce you, legend Danita Brown. Thank you so, so very much. Wow, this has been awesome. I needed this today. And Dr. Porter, you have been so inspired. When I first met you at the first workshop, you know, you think when things happen, you think, oh, something else on my plate. But this has been the best entree on my plate that I've ever had. Pat and Ed, thank you so much for just taking me under your wings. Uh, when she would ask for things, I try to get them. In, but she called me and said, baby, where is this? And she never got um, upset with me because she knew what was on my plate back then. And she definitely knows what's on my plate now. So I'd like to say thank you so much. Thank you so much again, Pat and Ed. You are, are my mentors, my everything. Thank you so much. And I'm coming to Texas, not to work. We're just going to come and hang out. Uh, so we're going to get started here because this this year, you know, with the pandemic going on, things were so different this year for the last two years. So this year we kept it moving. We decided we were going to give cancer the boot. And I'm truly, truly, you know, cancer is one of those. And, and they know uh, Dr. Porter, they know I'm crazy. But cancer is like one of them boyfriends that you had when you first fell in love. You'll never forget that pain, but you just don't have nothing else to do with him. So that's why I am about cancer now. I am so sick of cancer, y'all. I could just kick him out the door. And I just thank God, though, that he's in my life, that he's dead at work in miracles. So with that being said, I don't want to, we don't want to hold you long because this is Saturday morning and the sun is shining. And here in Memphis, we have beautiful temperature today. So I know everybody's ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and get this program started. So uh, at this time, Cassandra, I'm going to let her be the moderator. Am I right, Cassandra? I'm, I'm all off. Pat, am I doing right? How we do it? Okay, Cassandra, you want to go ahead and bring on our next person? We've had uh, the introduction. And so next, it's time for our, you tell them, it's time for our speaker, right? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. You guys know me. I'm Cassandra, Danita's administrative assistant and assistant to all of you guys too. But our next speaker is Denise Silas. You may know her from uh, Brown Baptist. She's also the Mary Kay lady. <laughs> but she's had some, some pain of her own that she's turned it around for the good. So Denise Silas, I'll turn it over to you. Well, great morning, great morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Well, wonderful, wonderful, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. First of all, I just want to thank God for even the opportunity to participate in such an amazing, I have to be honest, when people ask me to do something, I'm like, why me? Like, why me? Like, Danita knows everybody, right? She knows everybody. So I just take it as an assignment that was given to me for this purpose, for this, for this reason at this time. Congratulations. I'm going to do more research on this 50 Hoops. It sounds like an amazing organization that I need to tap into. So I am going to just share with you guys. I did have to write up my notes because this is definitely something that can become emotional. So if nothing else with my snotty nose and everything, at least I can read what I had. So to let you know, I did come prepared. Um, so as she mentioned, uh, my name is Denise Silas and I was impacted by cancer through my mom and my sister. My first encounter was with cancer was with my mom when she was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2000. At that time, I was living in Chicago, which is a little bit over one hour from my hometown of Racine, Wisconsin. I was able to see my mom throughout her journey and even take her to her doctor's appointments in the last six months of her fight. Even though I hated the diagnosis, I knew it was a consequence of her smoking all of my life. My mom's battle was over um, on April 12, 2002 at the young age of 56. I remember trying to fight through dep depression. In that season, I was expecting my second child. I was selling my mom's affairs in Racine 
packing up my own home in Chicago to relocate to Maryland. <clears throat> I remember at Christmas, just trying to get through it all, adjusting to my new life in Maryland without my mom and the rest of my family. Excuse me, guys. My next encounter with can cancer was with my sister who was diagnosed. At that time, I was now living here in Mississippi, a 10 hour drive from my hometown. With that and other circumstances, I wasn't physically there through her journey. Before my sister was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, she was being treated for acid reflux. The symptoms of ovarian cancer are so common to what we experienced, it didn't seem too abnormal to her. The bloating, abdominal pain, or the acid reflux. When the abdominal pain continued, she had to have surgery until then she was diagnosed. Her journey about three years she passed April 15, 2011, at the young age of 46. Of course, there were some old wounds that have been reopened. They both passed in the same month, different years, but days apart. First, my mom. And now my big sister. I remember the emotions I went through. Excuse me. I didn't want to see myself fighting through depression again. I believe in my heart of hearts that our family members would not want us to be grieving to the point where we are so out of it that it's impacting our lives where we are unproductive and un unable to make it through. I needed something to push me through the pain. That September, Mary Kay happened to come out with the teal polish and teal eyeliner. I heard about teal tolls for ovarian cancer. Awareness. I learned that September was Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. You see, back then you didn't hear much about ovarian cancer. It is known as the silent killer because the symptoms of bloating, abdominal pain, feeling full is so common for women. This was different from my mom getting lung cancer because we don't know why my sister got ovarian cancer. One of my five strengths is significance. Wanting to make a big impact is who I be. So I, so I chose to take my strengths and use my pain for good to help me make it through and to give my sister's pipe meaning. It started with teal polish in my dining room with a few customers to do a face, then to doing face a thumb with teal eyeliner to now the annual event, Feel the Teal in Your Hottest Heels for Bearing Cancer Awareness. Until the pandemic, it was a great time of awareness Fellowship, we raised money. We had a Feel the Till in Your Hottest Heels um, shoe contest. And Miss Angela Runker was one of our winners <laughs> one time as well. So we just made it more of a joyous occasion as we honored my sister's life. Until the pandemic, we were always together. The last two years, we had it virtually. We knew that just because COVID happened, that didn't mean the awareness needed to stop. In my sister's memory, we have raised at least $6,000 to help find a cure and bring awareness for ovarian cancer. At every event, someone says, I didn't know that. And because of that, I know it was worth giving my pain purpose. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Denise your your testimony in your sister's lives and your mom's life was not in vain their memory will continue to live on thank you again next up we have our own brother in the ministry um brother gerald rucker you guys have seen him dancing around the church alongside his own caregiver and best friend and wife, Sister Angela, who we've seen beautiful Miss Rucker also. So Gerald, uh, will uh, it's your turn. We'll go lead on. Boom. Here we go. First of all, I would like to say good morning to everyone, my fellow Zoom members this morning. I'm not going to pray because I'm going to stand on the prayer that Pastor Cuddly have already done. But first of all, my topic is life goes on. And I start right there with life goes on. And one reason I can attest to that is I'm still here. I'm still here. I still got the best caregiver 
my wife, Sister Angela Rucker, who have been strongly by my side. I have also found myself much closer to God after going through these things, this terrible disease. And around 2009, and if I go, when I get to the, if I go too far, somebody said time up, cause this is a topic that you shouldn't have never put me on. <laughs> but in 2009, I was introduced to a plan to get rid of this month of my loan by having a stem cell transplant and going and starting my procedure with that stem cell transplant. I visited a doctor that was going to coach me through it. And during that meeting, I wasn't really in tune with him because the only thing I was thinking about was how long would I be here? And after a while, I just had enough. I said, hey, doc, I don't have enough of this. Let me ask you something. How long do you think I'll be here? How long do you think I will be here on this earth? Well, he said, Mr. Rucker, that's a hard question. You could be here three months. You could be here six months. You could be here a year. And you definitely won't be here more than three years. Well, Doc, if you was on this Zoom call, I would say here I am 12 years later, six years being free of Martha myeloma and 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 as life goes on i've had i've enjoyed my four daughters my seven grandkids of course my lovely wife life goes on where i continue to enjoy them one of my daughters all four have been educated and you know when you first go through this start going through this you try to make contracts with God. God, please just let me see all my kids graduate. Then all that happened. Then you say, well, God, I got another one. Just let me see my kids graduate from college. Well, I got that. Well, now I'm enjoying my kids. One of my daughters is the principal of Oak Haven High School and the other three is in education and doing very well some with their own business, seven grandkids. Seven grandkids never had a boy in our generation. My first grandchild, second grandchild was a boy, the first born boy into the family. One of my grandchild, I graduated from college. She's, a, she's an educator and now going to be, to receive a master's in education. And my grandson is at his first year at Middle Tennessee State. As life goes on, he is the freshman of these, the director and chairman of the freshman class. And that's, that's a lot, lot to go on in life. Since then, as life goes on, we've bought a new home, several new cars, met lots of people, and, 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 and travel, that's something that I never thought we would do in the future with travel. We've done a lot of traveling. And, and uh, one thing I'd like to mention is that we came from an old traditional church. And in that old traditional church, I personally felt that I was trapped in a cell. And I felt I was trapped in a cell because I wanted to offer ministries to the church and a lot of other things. And, and it just seemed as though the pastor wasn't for that. Well, me and my wife, we decided that we should move on. And um, I probably should have said this earlier in my introduction. We became members of a church called Brown Missionary Baptist Church. And I like to put a title on it when I say that. I said, the Brown Missionary Baptist Church, where the Pastor Bartholomew Orr and Sister the Valerie Orr is the first lady. And in joining this church, 
I just figured I would just go there, a big mega church, sit on a pew, mind my own business, enjoy a service, enjoy a sermon, and call it the day. Well, nevertheless, that didn't happen. The director of the mail course came to me one day and he said, I know who you are. Nevertheless, he asked me to do something for him one time. He said, would you please come up, get off of that pew, and direct the mail course for me one time? Well, I decided to go along with him, I did that. And in doing that, I thought about the past where doctors told me I would never talk again. Doctors told me I would never walk again. Doctors told me I would never be able to clap my hands again. And I found myself on the floor doing that once more. Somewhere down that line, like Cassandra said earlier, I got the title, the dancing director. You don't know my story, but I got a lot of glory because in that, I am dancing because of the things that I was told that I would never be able to do again. So therefore, I cannot do nothing but put my dancing shoes on and do the things that I got to do to glorify God. And it's also, Jordan Brown Baptist, I decided me going through council that I will join the organization at Brown Baptist called the Council Ministry. Oh my God, there I found the best chairman ever that one could ever have. And that was, that is the director, the chairman, Danita Brown. My God, she is true in what she believed and she is true into what she won't done. And I am speaking today because since I've been in this ministry, she has made me through so many speeches that I had no idea that I would even do. Well, to wrap this up, I would say the future goals in my life that I would like to do and I plan on doing, that is telling man women, boys, and girls that you can make it through counsel. And my main message is to all men, go through it, do not be ashamed, tell people your testimony and where you came from. Now, all of us can go through this and come out successful, and I hear a lot of people in the position that I am, one of the speeches they give, give is, I am counsel free. But let me tell you something. You can make that statement all you want, but if you're making that statement without a man named Jesus, a God named Jesus standing next to you, you cannot make that statement. You need to go back to your doctors and say, I am not healed because I do not have this man called Jesus that's standing with me because this man, he went to the cross one day and he had a lot of things done to him. And one of the things he had done, had done when he was whipped all night long and he had a lot of stripes but I can testify through those stripes, I am healed. And I'd like to just say thank you for this opportunity and life goes on. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 We're gonna get the offering played out next. Amen. <laughs> thank you so much. Amen. If wow. you just, just stand up and kick your leg a minute, we'll be back at church. But thank you, Brother Rucker. Thank you so much for that. Wow. Thank you. Life does go on. 
as we've seen you and you are living a fulfilled and full life with everything that you do. So we thank you for your testimony, for your story. Uh, we do have to take a, I want to take a administrative break right here. And I'm remiss in, if you'll check your messages, I sent some poll questions out um, a couple of minutes ago and two of them. So please make sure you answer those. First one is how knowledgeable are you about multiple myeloma? Your choices are A, very knowledgeable, B, somewhat, or even C, not at all. And then, of course, you have a second question. Do you have any member of your family have or had multiple myeloma? And I'll send out other questions also during the rest of the workshop. But thank you again for, for so far for our two fabulous speakers, Denise and Gerald. And we'll move along and everybody continue to check your messages for what I'll continue to send out. Thank you. Next up, we have another brother in the ministry, Brother David Rogers. Brother David Rogers. He, alongside his uh, beautiful wife, Sister Deborah Rogers, they are always together. I haven't seen them dance yet, but there's still time. David, you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I guess, I, well, congratulations to- um, David, you need to, Porter. okay. He needs to click on video. Oh, yeah. I'll let you see me. Okay. There we go. Yeah, congratulations to Dr. Porter and to Mother Danita. Um, and what I would like to say is that uh, Dr. Porter, you, you talked about teachers. Well, I've known Miss Mother Danita for a long time now. She taught my children in the elementary grades. And uh, they are now grown. I have uh, grandchildren, but I met her years ago over at uh, uh, Seattle Elementary School. And she was a pleasure to, it was a pleasure to meet her as a teacher. And, uh, and it is a pleasure now to meet her at Brown Men, uh, can, uh, Cancer Support Ministry. Well, to start out with, you know how you work a job for years and you, plan your retirement. <clears throat> well, I had my, my uh, wife and my sister-in-laws and my daughter and my children praying for my retirement. And it was like two years before I retired. And so um, they, they, would, they would laugh at me and say, why do you want us to pray for your retirement? I want my retirement. And I told them, I want my retirement to be pleasant and enjoyable. I want it to travel and do some of the things that I didn't do while I was working. Well, at, at that opportunity, the Lord allowed me to retire in 2017, uh, February 17 of 2017, as a matter of fact. And, uh, and so I, I was, you know, you, you, when you leave the job and, and you get at home and then my wife was saying, well, what you gonna do? I said, I'm not gonna do anything right now. I'm gonna enjoy these few days that I've got. Well, little did I know that in, from February of 2017 until November 23rd of 2017, which was Thanksgiving day. And Thanksgiving Day, you know how you know family gathers around. You prepare this big meal, and you want to you know chow down on it and enjoy yourself. After you eat, you want to watch a football game and sit back and let the football game watch you for a little while. Well, on um, that particular day, I and it's really kind of vague. I vaguely remember it. Uh, what I do remember of that day is that I, uh, that morning I got up, my son and his fiance was here and he was cooking 
and I was peeling potatoes for a potato salad. Well, I peeled those and I made the potato salad and we had all of the food prepared and ready to eat. And uh, we, we said uh, the blessing over the food and, and uh, we were eating and I took one bite of my food. And I told him, I've got to go lay down. And so I, uh, I went to, to lay down and they said I was on, because I don't remember much about that day. And I, I went to lay down and the next day I woke up and we were on our way to the emergency room. Well, we, we get to the emergency room and they, you know, they, they draw the blood and, and, uh, and check me over. And then they put me into uh, a room and I, you know, I didn't think anything of it because I had been having some chest pains and I thought it was, you know, heart related stuff. And when, uh, um, let's see, I think it was the next day or maybe a couple of days after that, my diagnosis came back and said, you have multiple myeloma. And I said, what is multiple myeloma, you know? Uh, cancer, and I, you know, I don't know exactly what it was or why had it attached itself to my body. Because this body wanted to retire and enjoy life. Well, it didn't go as I had planned, but God is still good. I, had, uh, I have uh, my wife, who supports me and my daughter. I have a, a, my daughter and my two sons. And then I have uh, sister-in-laws that are prayer warriors. And so we begin this journey uh, starting on, and I, and I say it started November 23rd of 2017. And from there on, we were praying every day and thanking God for what he has done because it's, it's one thing for sure. The Lord, was, the Lord was with me because otherwise I wouldn't be here today. The Lord took, took us from step by step. He, he, I talked to my primary care physician and he recommended a, the, the West Clinic and the doctor, and the Dr. Reed, at, 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 well, it's my doctor, my oncologist, and he came in and he told us what we have to do. And so we did that. I was in treatment for about uh, six months. And, uh, and the multiple myeloma had, uh, uh, had gone away. So we thought, so then we, uh, after, that treatment plan, we went, uh, it was recommended that I have a stem cell transplant. I went through this, the process of, uh, uh, of the stem cell and for 30 days, uh, we lived in Nashville for the stem cell and then we returned back home and everything was looking good. But then, in, and that was in August of, 20, uh, uh, 2018. And also, during 2018, my son was getting married. And I told the doctors, now, we can't do anything until I get to my son's wedding. And after his wedding, then we can do whatever y'all desire to do. And that was the stem cell treatment in August of 2018. Everything went well. But then in October of 2018, the multiple myeloma returned. My doctor said, well, it mutated and, and it's back in your, in your blood again. So then he came, uh, the doctor developed a new plan for me. It was immunotherapy and, and uh, we went through that process from 2018 and 2019, 2019, the multiple myeloma could not be seen in any of the tests, urine nor blood. And even the um, 
biopsy did not show any. So after, after that process was uh, of uh, the treatment, everything was looking good. And the Lord, and again, during, during that end time process, the Lord blessed us. You know, we, I stood on the scripture that um, our cancer support ministry used, which is Isaiah 53 and five, and also on Psalm 103, and then two, also one other scripture, which is 107. And then, and now, but, and there was one other one that I definitely used. It was uh, Psalm 119, I believe. And it says, thou shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So that's what I stood on. And my journey now is it's even better. I've been uh, in remission for two years now. And I thank God for it. And I look forward to doing some of those things that I wanted to do. I have my grandchildren and, uh, and my children and my wife. We're going to do some of the things that we desire to do. And I just thank you all for having, giving me this opportunity. And, uh, and God bless you today. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rucker. Thank you. I'm, I must say, and I tell everybody knows is you and your wife are one of the most uh, prayerful people that I know. Everything that comes out of your mouth is always so positive. And that's what I appreciate that from, from me. That's what I appreciate. So and I, and I thank you uh, for your story, your testimony. There is life after multiple myeloma. Thank you. Next up, we have the uh, American Cancer Society. We have Bert Fain. She's our superhero for the Memphis area, and we love her. <laughs> Bert Fain, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. And first of all, congratulations um, to the, the legend. <laughs> um, Danita and Dr. Porter. I am Bert Fain, as Cassandra said, with the uh, American Cancer Society, and I am a Cancer Control Strategic Partnership Manager. Uh, the American Cancer Society offers support in your community and online to help individuals during and after cancer treatment. And I'm going to briefly give you some information on some of the services and support that the American Cancer Society provides. Um, we have a 24 seven cancer, not hotline, but a helpline. And that helpline provides information 24 uh, seven, provides support, connecting callers uh, to trained specialists who can answer any cancer related questions about diagnosis and connect them with the American Cancer Society's uh, programs and our services as well. Um, places, uh, place to stay doing treatment. Uh, uh, the American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge provide free lodging. It's a home away from home for cancer patients and their caregivers when they travel for treatment. It is a welcoming environment uh, where patients and caregivers can stay at no cost as long as they need to stay there doing treatments or uh, rides uh, to uh, treatments. When transportation is a problem or concern for cancer patients, we may be able to provide rides to them for their radiation and chemotherapy treatments and doctor's appointments as well. Our Road to Recovery program provides free rides for cancer patients. And in some cases, we also provide funding to hospitals and other uh, uh, health system to help people get to their treatment. But we have breast cancer support programs. Our Reach to Recovery program, I think Danita is a member of that uh, group as well, uh, connects, uh, that program 
uh, connects breast cancer, newly diagnosed breast cancer survivors and patients with other trained breast cancer survivors to give them the, the, the support that they need while they are going through their journey of being diagnosed with breast cancer. We have a survivors or uh, cancer survivors network and the cancer survivors network provides a safe online uh, connection where patients and their caregivers can talk to other patients and caregivers and discuss similar experience to assist the caregiver and assist the uh, patient as well. We have a program when women have gone through radiation chemotherapy uh, treatments, often they lose their hair. And we have um, TLC where individuals can order wigs and also to help with their appearance, they, uh, women can order hats and scarves as well. We have a caregiver support group um, and resource, resources to provide families uh, with information to help them care for their loved ones who have been diagnosed with cancer. We provide speakers and educational materials for community events such as health fairs and educational programs. Also, I'm proud to say since 1996, the American Cancer Society has supported researchers to give them the support they need to keep research going to find a cure for this insidious disease. Um, and most important, importantly, to make advances in prevention, early detection, treatment, and care for those with cancer. We have helped more, the American Cancer Society has helped more than 24,000 investigators and we're currently funding 15 grants in Tennessee, totaling $12.5 million currently. This year, four historically black colleges and universities receive cancer research funding to create a more inclusive research environment to address health disparities and bring people of color into the fold for clinical research. This is vital to ensuring scientific excellence. The colleges involved here in Tennessee is Meharry, uh, Morehouse School of Medicine, Charles Drew Medical School, and Howard University. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Bert, and for all that you do, you and the American Cancer Society, uh, you're one of our unsung heroes you're always in the background <laughs> willing to help if y'all didn't know she american cancer society provides us with our t-shirts that we get and we that we appreciate so with that being said bert you are the winner of our door prize today thank you <laughs> my <laughs> pleasure like i say may the work i've done speak for me thank you <laughs> Yes, ma'am. You'll receive that uh, shortly. But please... Bert, we need you to send uh, your address to uh, Spider, and that is P E A S O C P S O C at yahoo.com. I'm going to see if I can find you here, Bert Fain. Let's see, and I'll send it in your in the chat. Oh, All right. right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Go ahead, Denise. Okay. At this time, we're coming to the close of a wonderful and uh, just informational, informative, 
And first of all, I would like to just say again, thank you all. First of all, I'm going to take this hat off because even though my name, uh, I have that new title at church, they know I don't I don't wear hats. Now, I wore the cowboy hat, but them hats are something, to, you know. But in a way, I just want to thank everybody for just taking the time out on a Saturday, a beautiful Saturday morning, just to come online. And as uh, my Pat said that when she called me, she was so sweet and she was so sensitive. She says, uh, do you want to cancel? And we just wait. I said, no, I do not. I said, because... You know, my mom does not even does not want me to cancel. She doesn't want me to miss out on anything. And I just thank you all for bearing along with us. We wanted this to be uh, those that know me I always know I want to do different. <laughs> and I thought so much of, you know, we can hear we hear from the doctors, Dr. Porter, and I thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to just continue to work with you. And we really dig deep. OK, and we get some things done. Uh, uh, COVID can't stop us. COVID is not going to stop us because cancer is raising his head worse than ever looked like y'all since COVID has been around to us, for us. But I just thank each and every one of you and we're going to fight on and we're going to continue. I want to thank all the speakers and I get so tickled. Uh, uh, Pastor Conley, they just, he, he, he just, he has, he just makes my day because every time he sees me, he doesn't treat me like a, like a, like an older mother. He treats me like one of these hip hop mothers. So that just makes my day. And sister, De, uh, my Denise, that's a diva y'all. That girl is so cute at church. I be looking at her and she just be praying. Walk like this. So thank you so much. But you know, things that God always has every, a plan. And who would ever known when I first met you, you was talking about ovarian cancer, that I would need your help and your support. So, you know, I got, I'm, I'm going to be calling you and I'm going to need you to walk along beside me. And what can I say about pa Brother Gerald Rucker? Yeah, Bro Rucker, he's always tell me no, but he know he doesn't mean it. He he started calling me yeah. boss lady because he said I boss him, boss them all the time, but I really don't. But he is our dance and choir director. He's such an inspiration. He gets up and go to work every day, even when he doesn't feel well. I've heard, and he don't want us to know it, but he is awesome, awesome. And my day, my Rogers, we met years ago when I was a teacher. And I was one of those teachers who I was concerned about my ch children succeeding. I wasn't trying to win a popularity contest or the teacher to let my class have their way. And my motto, and what was it right, David? My motto was, that was my class. I even told my principal, I run this classroom. And what comes out of this classroom is going to reflect me. And that was my motto. I wanted them to be productive citizens when they got older. I wanted them to know that life doesn't care about your feelings. Life doesn't care if you're not used to a teacher with a loud mouth. Life does not care. And I'm so proud of them. They have proven and who would have ever known that we would be back in that circle with Deborah? Deborah, I, I'm gonna tell this real quick. We were in New Orleans on a field on a trip for teachers and uh, parents. And that Sunday morning in New Orleans, I was trying. We were all trying to get out on a uh, canal and Bourbon Street to get that last minute shopping in. And his wife caught a cab, I think, and went to church on a that Sunday. And I looked at her. But I now I know, because when I tell you grounded and rooted in the Lord and a prayer warrior, they are that. So who would have ever, see, God was getting everything orchestrated for times like this. We kick and fight when things happen in life and when things are going on in life. But I have found out that God is getting us ready. So when we come up against some, we come up against trials and tribulations, we are ready. So as I have gone through being a 13-year cancer survivor, I had to be able to tell people how God healed me through man. He gave man knowledge and wisdom, Pastor, uh, Dr. Porter. I keep calling you Pastor Porter. Maybe something is coming. <laughs> but he gives us, gave them wisdom and knowledge of how to work with us and how to cure us. Yes, God is a healer, but he bought our healers here on earth, like COVID. COVID is here, but God gave man the knowledge and the uh, to be able to develop something for us to see right here and take. So I just thank God for what he's doing in my life. 
I thank God for my cancer ministry. We are survivors. We're overcomers. We have caregivers and they support me. I'm going to say 100%. They truly, truly support me. And we have been together for now. I've been a survivor going on 13, getting ready to go 14 years. So we have been together for 12 years. And that means so, lot, so much to me. And then to be connected to 50 hoops by, I call it by accident, because it was somebody else's baby. And they turned and they asked me, the pastor asked me to help out. And the other person, he gone on. And we have still been in this marriage ever since. So I thank God for the way he orchestrates our life. And uh, Robin, it's so good to see you. I know I forget people's names. I forget people, you know, faces. I just be honest with people. Doc, uh, doc y'all, y'all didn't think about this mind thing about that chemo man. That chemo brain is alive and well, you know? I forget my name some days. But I just want to say thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you if you ever need anything on behalf of Pastor Orr and the Brown Baptist Cancer Support Ministry. We are here for you, and we don't just say it, do we, David? We are here for you. So at this time, uh, uh, Pat, do I need to do anything with the poll questions? I think you have done everything, Danita. You have, oh, I am so proud of you, baby. I love you so much. I love you. And you all, she, she is, is not, not just pretending. pretending. This, this is her. Is her. Every time, Every time I talk, I talk to her, her she, she talks to me like, like this. And sometimes, sometimes when I'm down, down I, can't I can't talk to her because she's going to make, make me cry. cry. But, but I, I love, love her, her so much, y'all. All of you speakers were just absolutely fantastic. Thank all of you. Robin, thanks for jumping in here. All of you. David Rogers, Bert, my girl, you a legend, baby. You were, you were with every service you talked about, my daughter, breast cancer daughter, and my throat cancer, lymphoma son, we've used all of it. We've used every single service of American Cancer Society. Uh, Miss Rucker, Angela, all of you, all of you speakers, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. This, this time, time is past the comments still on? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, David, David, would you would go you ahead, ahead and give, give us the, the uh, benediction? Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before you do that, Dr. Porter, is anything you want to say? say? <laughs> no, I'm just happy to be here and I enjoy it all every time we get together. And I'm grateful for God and I'm grateful for every opportunity. I really am. Um, but I talk a lot, so I won't start. I'll just sit here and be grateful. You sure? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, David, we're ready. Unmute. <laughs> yes, ma'am. See, she, she still gives orders, okay? That's what those teachers will do for you. All <laughs> right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, oh God, for this opportunity to enter to your presence, oh God, and to celebrate and to enjoy, God, the souls that you have placed on this earth. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that they do. And God, we just ask that your presence will be with us, oh God, as we go through today and the next day and for whatever time length that you have us here, God. We want to be able to give you the glory and the honor, oh God, for our lives so that others may know who you are, Lord. And God, we just thank you. We thank you for the organization of 50 Hoops, oh God. We thank you for uh, Dr. Porter and Mother Danita and all of the participants, Lord. Now we ask that you would bless us and keep us, oh God. Watch over us and be our protector. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day. Sending a virtual hug to everybody. Love you guys and thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, go enjoy the day, y'all. It's beautiful outside. Mwah. Love you. Thank you. Love you. Bye.